Because again, it's about money and control. They don't want anybody out there. They don't want a Dunnigan Kaiser. They don't want a John Whitehead. They don't want anybody out there saying, we don't agree, you know. We have a right to get on a public street and protest and fight this stuff. They don't want that. This week's specials with Miles Franklin Precious Metal Investments. 2022 Silver Eagles for 845 over spot. 2022 Silver Krugerrands for 379 over spot. $20 extra fine gold Liberty coins for one ounce spot plus 139. $20 gold St. Gaudens coins almost uncirculated for one ounce spot plus 149 and brilliant uncirculated for one ounce spot plus 169. Call us at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. Welcome back to Liberty and Finance. I'm your host, Dunnigan Kaiser, and our guest today is a returning one. John Whitehead is the founder of the Rutherford Organization, Rutherford Institute at rutherford.org. He is a constitutional attorney who has argued cases up to and including the U.S. Supreme Court. He stands up and writes articles and argues cases and takes on the cause of people who have been subject to government overreach. He joins us again today, this Monday, January 24th, 2022. John, thanks for coming back on Liberty and Finance. Thanks for having me on, sir. Our viewers always appreciate your outspoken uh, advocacy for the ordinary person in the face of unconstitutional overreach by government. Uh, most recently, you continue to write a series of articles pointing out the big picture and connecting the dots for people. I reached out to you this time because there was a provocative article that came out in all the major media about the, the editorial board. This is not just about one individual. This is about the entire editorial board of the Salt Lake Tribune newspaper, which is a major metropolitan newspaper. And the, they uh, published a, a article in their paper criticizing Utah's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, writing that the, quote, civilized thing to do would be to deploy the National Guard to ensure unvaccinated individuals are forced to remain largely at home and under almost all circumstances. This, in the face of uh, significant evidence mounting that there is uh, considerable reason for belief that, that this is not about uh, medical uh, necessity, but and not about public health, but about control. Uh, we have significant concern raised from many quarters about this topic. And our, the purpose of our channel is not to uh, challenge or contradict medical policies. The, the purpose of our channel is to make sure that the rights and the freedoms of ordinary individuals are clearly upheld and debated where necessary um, in open forum. So could you talk to us about the constitutional um, issues at stake here uh, for liberty behind uh, the, this uh, editorial board insisting that the National Guard should be used to make sure that people are locked up in their own homes. Well, I would say, uh, too, if you want, people want to get a deeper knowledge of it be, beyond this interview, you go to our website, Rutherford.org. We've written a lot of, about this subject matter, bodily integrity, freedom of, of choice, and those things. But the thing that's most concerning here, and I say if the people who wrote, who wrote our Constitution, basically the Bill of Rights, James Madison, guys like Thomas Jefferson, if they saw what this uh, editorial board called for, they would back up and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you start doing this stuff, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. And uh, George Washington probably said it best. He says, you do, do not have a standing army on American soil. He was warning Americans. Do we really want the military corralling people in their homes? Or, this is the thing, entering their homes or forcing vaccinations on people. And um, if, if we get to that point, that means the government can do anything it wants. It means the Bill of Rights that uh, we have that guarantees the sanctity of our homes, uh, our bodies, the right to freedom to move in our society freely will be completely destroyed. And I see that's what's happening because what I see across the country, when I talk to people that I've known for years, they're now distrusting everybody, basically. And we've moved into a system where the American people can no longer would be able to join together, do anything effectively in a large group. And that's one thing I saw. But if you studied history, and uh, again, I've written a lot about this, starting back in uh, the when Ronald Reagan was president, uh, his administration, uh, Dick Cheney and people like that, they were running the Rex 84 exercises out west 
against so-called domestic uh, terrorist people and training against them. And there's a certain paranoia in our government about uh, the fact that the American people are going bananas and crazy and all that stuff. Uh, there was a 2030 video that came out, a very important video that was uh, by FOIA request. The Intercept got a copy of it, which showed that uh, it's a training video. But basically what they were talking about in the training video is putting down any kind of disgruntlement. They're predicting that by 2030, by 2030, this country is going to totally collapse. The way I'm looking at things now Eight years from now, if things continue the way they are, with farmers now saying they they can't afford fertilizer, they're pulling back on their crops, all the shortages we're going to see, we could see a, a breakdown in society. But uh, like I'm saying, there's, there is a stream of paranoia in our government against the American people. Now, here's the question I got. The Constitution starts with we, the people of the United States, do ordain this Constitution. We are the government, folks. Keep telling people that. Uh, the people of Washington, D.C. are supposedly our representatives. But I know that not, that's not true. They don't really represent us. They represent one thing, money, big money. Uh, and uh, there have been a number of important studies by professors across the country, one out of uh, Princeton University, showing that where money congregates is in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is run by about 585 billionaires, as they said about six years ago. It's probably more than that now. And uh, they work with the so-called Deep State, the Seventh Floor Group, which was a memo leaked by the FBI, indicating that there is a group underground that, that, that actually controls the government. So uh, be distrustful of these things. And when you have editorial boards, the press is supposed to be our freedom voice out there. When you have the press saying, let's clamp down, call in the National Guard. And what you're going to have, too, is there, there are going to be people who are going to resist. People are going to get shot. Their hands are going to be banged on the ground and those kind of things. Do we really want the National Guard? It's called the National Guard. They have in each state coming into people's homes or forcing people into a camp. There's a lot of governments are talking about detention camps now, again, all of a sudden. And it's not that far-fetched if, if something else weird happens within the next year or so, and we don't know what's going to happen because we're not, in, we're not the ones in power controlling things, we the people. And it's, like I say, it's been going on for years. Uh, I would suggest people read this, read the commentary that uh, we just put out. I'm making sure I have the right name. Totalitarian Paranoia Run Amok is the name of the commentary. But I go through basically how for years the gun has been, been moving toward putting people away and um, in camps and stuff like that. In 2008, the uh, government, uh, the U.S. Army issued a, a, a report saying basically if, if it comes time to distress, they want the military ready to go and get ready to go. And they've been doing that. And just about that same time, a couple of years after that report was issued, the government <clears throat> uh, contracted with the, a, a corporation and had 1.6 hollow point bullets made. We don't know how many more they've made since then. And they've been passed out to government agents. You're talking about, to someone here, I was a military officer. I served at Fort Benning. I served at Fort Hood. I was an infantry officer. I trained people. We were not allowed to use hollow point bullets. They were considered inhuman, and they are. When they hit your body, they expand on contact, and your uh, head will go off. I mean, when you look at uh, the way John Kennedy was shot, John F. Kennedy, he was, he was shot in the head with a hollow point bullet. The back of his head went off. That's what we got government agents, so 120,000 possibly running around this country, armed with Kelvar helmets, all this stuff and hollow point bullets. And they're, they have an arsenal of stuff that they've got, and they keep building it up and up and up. You have the militarized SWAT teams now. 80,000 SWAT team raids annually in this country. And the media, by the way, doesn't cover much of any of this thing. You have to do your own research, your independent research. But when you have police running around now with all this equipment and uh, tank-like vehicles and all these stuff, it's we're in the worst situation I've ever seen. We're moving into a total militarized empire, something that the white D. Eisenhower 
in one of his, his last State of the Union basically said, here they come, folks, be careful of the military industrial complex. Because again, it's about money and control. They don't want anybody out there. They don't want a Dunnigan Kaiser. They don't want a John Whitehead. They don't want anybody out there saying, we don't agree. You know, We have a right to get on a public street and protest and fight this stuff. They don't want that. And, you know, it's they're doing these Robin Sage exercises right now in North Carolina. The military is training in North Carolina, going to the hills and stuff against so-called domestic terrorists. Uh, what I was really surprised, I trained at Fort Benning. Fort uh, Benning announced two years ago they were building a $1 million realistic urban center based on Chicago and Phoenix, Arizona, uh, where they would be training ICE agents, military, and police would be training against basically American citizens, an uprising. Now, wait a second here. I thought the military was for <laughs> invading armies from other areas, going overseas, but they're training to shoot me or you or put me and you away. They, they're already trained. I mean, in California, uh, like six, seven years ago, uh, they did a, uh, they were doing training exercises against so-called zombies walking the street, the military was. They'll use any excuse to train. But that's where we're at right now. And uh, again, the military drills, uh they're very realistic, supposedly, and uh, they're getting ready for something that they think is coming down. And maybe they know more about it than we do. Maybe the economy is going to collapse. If that economy does collapse, you're going to see a lot of stuff and going haywire here. And, I mean, I hear people all over the country say they have trouble getting food at the stores and stuff like this, and it's just a very, very difficult situation. But the point is, and they mention this in some of their papers, these so-called things about they're, they're dealing with domestic terrorists, their main goal here is to protect the economic elite, which is another important thing that people need to research is the economic elite has underground buckers all over the United States. Look up Mount Weather, folks. The Washington Post did an article on it. The Mount Weather is a place right outside of Washington, D.C. It's multi-level underground. It has an office of the presidency. Uh, has shopping malls, so the rich and the elite out of Washington, D.C. can go escape. But listen, we asked this question. We're paying for that through our tax money. Why aren't they building that for us, too? They're saying maybe possible uh, nuclear attack. Well, why would we get blown away and they go hide in a, a bunker and come out and shake hands with Putin or whoever they're fighting later? Uh, so... It's a, it's a mess, and I think most people don't get it. Uh, it's a, a term Hitler used, the sleepwalking people. Uh, we're just sleepwalking. We're addicted to our screen devices. We're watching uh, television, screen devices, up to 150 hours a month. Man, I mean, that's why you can't get anybody engaged in doing anything significant in training and stuff like that. So, and again, there's a lot of agents ready to step down. The FBI, like, I, like I've written about, has been infiltrating the, any kind of movement for years, starting back in the 60s. They grew their hair long, smoked dope with the, the hippies, and tried to undermine what they were doing, uh, the free speech movement back then. And they'll do it now. You just can't trust. And here's the other thing. You can't trust what the government says. What did James Madison say? I keep telling people, I say, what's the first principle of a patriot? What James Madison said. What did he say? He said we ought to mistrust all those in power. When you start trusting a candidate, anybody, I'm just telling you, you're a fool. Uh, the Wizard of Oz. Watch the movie. Who was the wizard? He's a guy hiding behind a curtain, a broken down crook. Uh, and that's what, what we see. There's a shadow government, folks. If you don't believe that, go read some of the articles on good websites like ours. It's all footnoted. They're there. It's a fact, you know. And the question is, what are we going to do about it? I'd like to follow up on several points that you just touched on there. One of the things you mentioned was the uh, we, the people, are supposed to be the real government, and those in Washington are just our representatives. In other words, we, uh, deriving their just power through the consent of the governed, as it, as, as it says in our founding document. Uh, we've had another constitutional attorney, Dr. Edwin Vieira, on several times talking about the constitutional roots of the, and he keeps clarifying who 
that we need to be clear who we are. We are the the people. We are the the the, the government, and and that anyone who's our representative is is a civil servant on our behalf uh, to serve us. And he also focuses on this topic. And you mentioned uh, some of these militarized forces and National Guard units that are training against uh, where their mock enemy in these uh, war games that they're doing is not a foreign invader, but a domestic uprising. Uh, and what they've even used the terminology in some cases, a, a domestic militia. Ironically, the National Guard is a is a uh, not the original form. The original form was the constitution militias of the several states. So at the beginning, even before the beginning of the United States, all this, the several states that formed the United States each had their own constitutional state militias. In fact, those are still on the books in most of those states as well. And uh, they're, they're sometimes referred to as the unorganized militias. But anyway, each state is supposed to have a, a state militia con- constituted of the people. And so the whole point is to resist threats, foreign and domestic. So here we are, uh, things upside down and distorted and twisted to where we now have, uh, and, and you always see it in the, in the use of language. There's a quote here from the article that's going to be linked in this article, again, from the Salt Lake uh, Tribune editorial board, quote, were Utah a truly civilized place, the governor's next move would be to find a way to mandate that kind of mass vaccination campaign we should have launched a year ago, going as far as to deploy the National Guard to ensure that people without proof of vaccination would not be allowed, well, anywhere, unquote, the board wrote. So in the name of civilized society, they're saying that free people should be not allowed to go anywhere. And um, the other thing you mentioned was uh, concentration of uh, wealth and power, and those two go together, in Washington, D.C. When we were attending the Ron Paul Institute Peace and Prosperity Conference in Washington, D.C., I was walking my dogs and uh, walking along, and, and there was a manhole cover there, cast iron manhole cover, and cast into the cast iron manhole cover, it said, Fairfax County, Virginia, made in India. And the irony of it all is that Fairfax County, Virginia, was one of the only counties in the United States that did not have a real estate uh, value Uh, decline back in the global financial collapse of 2008, 2009, 2010. Everywhere else, everybody was going underwater. Their home values were dropping. A lot of people lost their homes, etc. But that was a island of prosperity in the midst of the the global financial collapse because the the sacrosanct protections around the flows of money and the control of those flows of money in Washington uh, protected that. But then the double irony that here we're talking about you know, made in made overseas here, the 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 offshoring of manufacturing to carve out the wealth of the of the middle class as well. But if we could get you back on uh, with us on this, particularly for this topic of advocacy by the media, and you mentioned the media are supposed to be our watchdogs, supposed to be standing up for the truth and for open debate about what's in, what's important, what people need to know. What has the media been doing? Uh, in the face of all of this overreach that's been going on that you're talking about, are there any examples uh, where they have actually been standing up for the truth or where people can go to get the truth? I don't see much. I don't watch mainstream media. Um, It was Carl Bernstein back in the late 1970s, Bernstein and Woodward, who exposed Richard Nixon's uh, unconstitutional actions and got him out of office. Carl Bernstein said after that he started working with the big media, you know, New York Times and groups like that, CNN and stuff. And he said he was shocked to find out that government agents worked in the offices, vetted articles, helped write them and stuff like that. Uh, and that the we didn't really have a media that was representative of the people. And we still don't. I don't see it hardly anywhere. There are a few people who speak up, but when you have uh, – Five major corporations that control everything. When you have guys like Bill Gates that donates to all the different channels, uh, we have to be really be careful um, with the billionaires who run everything in the United States. I don't see many people speaking up today. There, there are a few out there, but they're independent. What I call independent media people on on websites, people like you, uh, and that's important. By the way, uh, we are the little people. If we the, and they fear the little people, that's why they're, they're getting hollow point bullets. That's why they're doing all the things they're doing. They don't want us to get together uh, in any kind of group and say, "Get out of here," like the Declaration of Independence said. 
and why kids don't read it today in public school, in many public schools, they don't read it. And uh, if you read the preamble, it says we can throw the gamut out. And that was what about, let me read the Second Amendment to you. It's pretty clear. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The idea was each state, even counties, would have their own armed militias. Why? Because they were lined up by the British and shot in the streets. Uh, the British would go into towns and destroy churches and burn them uh, during the uh, before uh, during the Revolutionary War. And one reason they did burn the churches, a lot of pastors, they said, came out, would give a sermon, then throw off their black robe, and then have a gun in their hand. They don't want to see any of that kind of thing. And uh, George Orwell, I think, said it best. He says, you know, the, you only have a free, a free people uh, if you have the right to bear arms. It's our duty that they can keep it over their fireplace. Uh, and the, we don't have militias anymore. We've given all that away to so-called National Guard, which can do anything it wants to do. If the President of the United States says, go get Whitehead, who's going to protect me? The local sheriff? No, they work with them. And, and again, there's another good movie I see with sub-local sheriffs around the country saying we're not going to enforce anything that's not constitutional. I like that. That's a good. That's a good movement. It's a small movement, uh, and things like that. But uh, it's really clear, folks. Read the Bill of Rights. We have a right to do all these things to fight the government. The march in front of them, but they do not want you to know that. That's why they keep most Americans clueless. I have, run, I have trouble running. Any American can tell me the five freedoms of the First Amendment, even lawyers. So they've done a really good job through the education system of making us dumb, and we have been dumbed down. Now the thing they're doing, which I find just it's the worst shape I've ever seen this country in. They've got us looking at each other with great distrust now. Whether you have this, you have this seed, whether you're wearing a mask, all these things. And, I, you know, again, they don't cover, they don't want to cover something they want. If you turn on the news media, folks, sometimes you're going across the stream of CBS, NBC, CNN, it's the same story. The same, and the same viewpoint of stories. If I saw CNN, NBC, and all them fighting each other over different viewpoints and stuff like that, it'd be great. But you don't see any of that. So... We're, it's they're forcing it down our gullets. And the question is, again, are you going to mistrust all those in power? Well, I do. I don't watch that stuff. You don't need to watch it. Get off of your screen devices because Facebook, Google, this is another thing most people don't realize. Uh, they, they maintain the intelligence cloud for all 17 intelligence agencies. They get a $10 billion contract. They get paid to collect information for the military and help them collect it. You're kidding me. So everything you do, we live in a total surveillance state. They watch everything we do. That violates the Fourth Amendment, which says we have a right to be secure at home, our papers and stuff. The government should be watching it unless they have some kind of evidence we're doing something illegal. And they don't. What's illegal today? The Department of Homeland Security says it. If you oppose the mandate or the vaccine, they consider you an extremist. Whoa, 2009. Uh, the Obama administration issued two reports, left-wing extremism and right-wing extremism. And uh, people, the uh, animal rights activists who are so-called extremists that need to be watched, uh, returning veterans. We even had cases where returning veterans picked up, arrested, and thrown in the mental hospital just because they opposed the government. We defended those cases. So that's the kind of government. If they want to come get you these days, there's going to be very little help, unless, unless. You get organized in your local communities, your local school, I mean, your local uh, city councils and stuff, and give clear directives to your local police. Do not enforce any federal mandate unless we approve it, the city council. And you can push this stuff back. But, again, what's that say to us? We, the people, are the government. But that takes responsibility. That takes getting up off your butt and stop watching the screen devices all the time. It's going to be very difficult. Because kids today, as I look at them, they're totally addicted to their narcissistic devices called cell phones. And we have a huge, I say, huge problem. And with uh, artificial intelligence now coming into the picture and directing a lot of things, the censorship, the council culture. I mean, uh, some colleges now in London uh, 
they're warning people about the book 1984 not to read it. Stay away from it. It's dangerous. What? What? George Orwell, the great thinker who predicted all this. Well, I can see why they don't want you reading it. Yeah. So, uh, Ray Bradbury stuff, Fahrenheit 451. And but here's the thing: get educated. Education precedes action. If I'm telling you a bunch of new stuff about all the stuff that's been going on, it's out there. Don't be clueless. Research it. Find out for yourself. Go to our website. Get educated. And we can change this thing. I, I'm, I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realist. It's hard to be an optimist today. But a realist says this. There is hope in the human race as long as we can get educated on our rights and enforce them through our local governments. Why? What does the Tenth Amendment allow? It allows local governments to nullify acts of the federal government. Why aren't we doing it if we're against it? Okay, folks, run for government in your local community. You know, that's an excellent point about the power still being closer to the people. Often the uh, local county sheriff who is re reporting only to the people, doesn't report to the mayor, doesn't report to the governor, doesn't report to the president, is often a ally for uh, individuals' rights. And that's the only law enforcement actually mentioned in the U.S. Constitution, I understand. Um, you also mentioned about protests uh why aren't people standing up? Why are we taking this? And we shouldn't be. Um, it's interesting that, again, uh, the insidious role of mainstream media in blacking out the protests that are happening across the country against uh, unconstitutional mandates, against restrictions on, on people's freedoms and on their rights, and not just around the country, but around the world. And yet you're not seeing those. If people, that's one of the things there's, there's you mentioned, they're forcing us to distrust each other. One of the ways you do that as you mentioned, is by getting people glued to the only source of information they have is, is what's ever being presented to them through their device, rather than finding out that, hey, other people, I'm not alone, other people like me, and there are a lot more people like us than are different from us in fundamentally what they want in life. They want families, they want freedom, they want the ability to determine their own uh, course in life, their own future, and to protect the integrity of their own body, their own community, their own state, their own beloved country. All of those protections are being stripped away by the elite, and for people to know that we have these things in common, we, we do, most people understand that, that they want uh, freedom, and, and that other people are standing up for this, so they need to seek out uh, independent sources, because the mainstream media is squelching the stories about the uprisings that are occurring for people standing up for their freedom. Um, once again, John, if people want to get connected, because you've got a vast amount of articles and footnotes and references and that sort of thing, uh, easily read brochures, that sort of thing that people can use as a quick reference on your website. Can you remind people how they can get in touch and find out more? Yeah, go to rutherford.org, rutherford.org. We do a weekly commentary and it goes into all things that's heavily footnoted. We do that. We have Bill of Rights pamphlets you can take. And uh, one guy actually called me. I was on a radio show a couple of years ago and he said, hey, it works. I read it to my kids, you know. And uh, read them the Bill of Rights and never <laughs> didn't know what it was. And these are kids that are in high school. Um, and uh, we have a pamphlet that goes into detail what each Bill of Rights means. And you can teach your kids in the home. And that's one little thing you're going to have to do. And uh, my book, Battlefield America, which is now coming out uh, in paperback with new information in it, it's updated. Uh, it's always been a good book for people to get to know and give different avenues about what they can do. But um, I will say this. Uh, the key here is, in, you, do you have integrity? If you have integrity, you're going to speak up when you see things going wrong, when they're not doing the right way. I mean, there were people in our past who died doing that. You go down the list. Uh, great men who stood up and fought because they said, I'd rather die than lose my freedom. And I'm the same way. I'm not going to put up with this stuff. And I'm going to expose it. And if you die in that way, folks, it's better than dying a coward. And you don't need to die a coward. And again, get educated. Education precedes action. And get active in your local governments. And let's turn this country around. I think we have about a decade left. Because it's going to be tough. Well, uh, we've been speaking with... John Whitehead, the founder of the Rutherford Institute at rutherford.org. Folks will put a link to his article 
uh, articles and his website as well as the articles we've been discussing uh, in the description of this video. As always, look for us not only here on YouTube but on Rumble and Brighton, our other channels, and SoundCloud if you want to listen to this audio only and so that you don't miss any of our interviews with any of our guests, including John Whitehead, make sure you go to our homepage at libertyandfinance.com, sign up for our free newsletter by just putting in your name and email address, click submit and confirm. Once you receive a confirmed email you're in, you'll get every single one of our interviews, regardless of whether it's able to go to YouTube or not. And uh, John, on behalf of all of our viewers, we just thank you once again for joining us here on Liberty and Finance. Thank you, sir. This is Dunnigan Kaiser, founder of Liberty and Finance. I'm now a licensed gold and silver broker for Miles Franklin. Call me directly for the physical gold and silver that you need at the best price with personalized private service from one of the oldest and best companies in the business. 31 years strong, A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, zero complaints, licensed and bonded. For physical delivery, vault storage, or precious metals IRAs, excellent prices, privacy, and confidentiality. Pay by check, money order, ACH, bank wire, or Bitcoin, satisfaction guaranteed. For fastest service, just call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 888-81-LIBERTY. And either I or one of my sons and fellow brokers will call you back as soon as we can and understand your needs.